structural frames are used in many designs across multiple industries and they can now be easily created natively in Onshape using the frame feature. Select a sketch, edge or face to locate your frame elements, then tweak them by rotating the profile and modifying the corner conditions from mitre to butt or coped butt. Each corner can be overridden if you want to change the style or direction of the corner treatment. For each profile you want to use, a new frame feature is required. You can choose a profile from the current document, other documents, or from the built-in frame profiles. Here you'll find a vast selection of profile types such as 8020, AISC, and ANSI, AS and ISO bar and tube stock profiles. Once you've chosen the standard, you can choose the profile type and browse the sizes available. Profiles will land on the center of the profile by default. You can override this position by selecting one of the nine points around the perimeter or center. The ends can then be trimmed or extended to make sure things line up correctly. Onshape assumes the closest face is the one you want to extend or trim. The frame feature always remembers the last used profile. So again, let's go to the profile library and choose the profile and size, which can be filtered by typing in a partial match. In this case, we want to trim the frame elements to be flush with the floor, but we're not going to trim the tops of the beams, simply because the elements we want to trim to do not yet exist. Let's finish this off with a tube across the A-frame, again, not concerning ourselves with trimming at this moment in time. The final piece to add requires a custom profile. This has been defined in this document, but it could also just as easily be in a company library of custom profiles. Vertices can also be used for selection. In the case where no edges are available, you can select multiple vertices to chain elements together. Any of Onshape's modeling tools, either built-in or custom, can be used to modify a frame. For example, move face is useful when there is no geometry to trim to or you simply want to extend by a specified distance. The last part to add to this design is a foot. It's a standard part, but it's not a frame profile. So in this case, I'll use the super derived custom feature just to save a little time and mirror each part to get the final frame design. Now that the frame is laid out, it can be trimmed correctly using the frame trim feature. This allows you to trim to faces, but also to groups of frames with the highest priority at the top to the lowest at the bottom. The feet in this design need to trim back the frames, so they will go at the top of the list. Next up is the vertical frames. These will be trimmed by the feet at the top of the list. Next is the A-frame. These elements will be trimmed by the vertical frames, but also the feet. And finally, the cross brace, which will be trimmed by all the frame elements above. And that's it, a completely trimmed frame with minimal effort. Now to manufacture this frame, you need a cut list. A cut list in Onshape is a feature very similar to the finish sheet metal model feature where you define all the frame elements before it as belonging to the frame. That allows you to do any post-processing operations that you wouldn't include in a cut list. Also, because Onshape lets you create multiple frames in one part studio, you can create a separate cut list for each. The data for the cut list is taken directly from the profile. If you're using a custom profile, this data will not be there by default. This can be easily fixed by navigating to the part studio where the profile is and using the tag profile feature. Here you can specify the standard and description and also specify any other column you want to appear in the cut list, like material or supplier. Profiles and tags can be configured so it's easy to build a library of your own profiles. Now the cut list shows the correct information. There is still one part missing though, the foot. 
as this is just a regular on-shape part, it needs to have its details added to the cut list. The column override option in the cut list feature enables you to add or change any data associated with any profile or other elements in your frame. For the foot, we need to add a description and the standard or supplier. If you share this document with the shop floor or an external supplier, the cut list table on the right can be viewed along with the 3D model, so there's no need to create a 2D drawing. But if you need to, you can. The cut list feature gathers all the frames together in a composite part, assuming that all the frame elements are fastened or welded together. So really this design should have been created with multiple cut list features. Once a view is added, you can add a new cut list table to the drawing. The data shown in the table is managed from the cut list table in the part studio, so if you need to show or hide columns, you can do it there. Finally, callouts can be added. You just need to select a column from the cut list table. The frame feature in Onshape will help designers from all industries to create their products faster. The new section tool improvements in Onshape allow you to have control of which parts of your design are visible in a section cut. The exclude option allows you to show select parts while the rest of the design is fully sectioned, and on the Include option, you're able to choose given parts to be sectioned out from a full design, which is helpful when viewing components that would otherwise be obstructed by geometry. The Curvature Visualization tool now allows to hide or show edges. This helps to analyze a clear representation of surface transitions for perfect surfaces. When using the Show Curvature tool, it is possible now to control the number of U-curves and V-curves. You can increase or decrease the number of curves from 2 to 64 for better visibility. This will help you to visualize the quality of your surfaces with more accuracy. Variables give you an easy way to manage the design parameters that control your model. The variable names you use may be obvious to you what they mean, but they may not be to others. So wouldn't it be nice if you could add a descriptive text to the tooltip? Well, now you can. In the variable dialog, there's a new field for description. Any text entered here will show up in the tooltip and also the variable table. A description can just be a name or it can be a full description of what the variable represents to make it clear to anybody who needs to modify your model. Variables can also be created or modified using custom features. The setVariable function in FeatureScript now includes an overload to add a description programmatically. And of course, no design is complete without a nice render. To avoid the repetitive task of exporting one tab after another, you can now select multiple tabs of the same type and export them all in one go. For example, you can choose to export multiple drawings at once. Simply select them from the tab manager, right click and the multi-export option indicating the number of elements that are selected will be shown. This option will appear only when same element types are selected like all assemblies, all parts or all drawings. In the export dialog, you can specify the export file name, the output format and so on. Any export rules will of course automatically fill out the required data. Once the export is complete, a notification will be given and a zip file containing all the exported files will be created. Custom tables created using feature scripts in a part studio can now be customized to suit your needs. Right clicking on a column title gives you a number of options. You can move left, move right, or hide a column completely. If you need to restore it, go to the three dot menu in the top right corner and select show material. The previous position of the column is remembered. To copy drawing views, select the drawing views you want to copy. A right click opens the context menu with a new option to copy the views. As an alternative to the context menu, the familiar key combination controller commands URV can also be used. The views can be pasted on the same sheet or another sheets within the same drawing tab. 
Even if a new drawing tab is created within the document, the copied drawing views can be pasted there as well. Inspection items can now be assigned to fields of the title block even if they are locked. In this example to make it clear which part number should be visible in the part. For users who need to follow ISO standards in their drawings, you can now change the ordinate dimension style from the default of ANSI to ISO in the dimension section of the Drawing Properties tab. When an auxiliary view is created, a new dialog window appears with new options. A linear edge must be selected on the parent view to create the auxiliary view. By default, errors are displayed pointing to the view plane. If something is to be changed in the auxiliary view, a right click on the view opens the context menu with the option Edit Auxiliary View. The error direction can be flipped, the view name can be changed, the errors pointing to the view plane can be toggled on or off, or a new linear edge can be chosen. Thanks for watching. Click the logo to subscribe or see some of our other videos linked here.